Welcome back guys. Now we're talking about normal form or strategic form representation. Well, what's the idea? Well, we can actually describe the game um, uh, by, using, uh, by using the idea of strategy rather than the, the, the game theory. Uh, so how do we make this translation is what we will talk about and how we interpret the uh, strategic or normal form representation. And then we're going to talk about the relationship between two. So here uh, I'm going to do it with an example. So let's suppose I have, uh, I'm sorry, I have a game where I have uh, two players. So player one moves first and he chooses between two actions, A and B, all right? And then player two moves second, but player two cannot observe these two actions, all right? So this is uh, one uh, possible action. I'm oh, sorry, uh, th this is the second player's information set. And then he has two potential actions, C, D, C, D, all right? And so the payoffs, like, uh, two, zero, uh, three, one, one, three, and zero, two, let's say. So um, here in this framework, how do we, first of all, write down the strategies? All right, so the strategy space or strategy set for player one. Remember, strategy is a complete contingency plan, meaning it maps all the decision node of that player into an action. All right, so here player one has only one decision node, right? So therefore, in this decision node, he has, not therefore, I'm sorry, he has one decision node, and in this decision node, there are two available actions. So therefore, his strategy has two components, uh, not two, I'm sorry, he has two strategies. He can either uh, choose A or choose B. All right, so actions and strategies are kind of same thing for player one. Well, what about player two though? Okay, player two has, all right, how many um, strategies he have? Well, remember, uh, again, the definition of strategy. Strategy is a contingency plan. It basically tells us how the player is gonna move at every decision node or at every information set. So here's maybe one thing that I should underline. Every decision node is an information set, but not every info set is a decision uh, node. Okay, so here's the thing. So, uh, sorry. Uh, decision node versus info set. What is the difference? Well, by the definition, information set is a collection of decision nodes, all right? So every decision node is therefore an information set because it has only one decision node, so it's a singleton set. Info set is usually have more than one decision node, all right? So that means if I say something like, um, info set, I actually mean the decision nodes as well because every single decision node, for example here, uh, this decision node is an information set which has only one decision node in it. This is an info set, but it has um, uh, two decision nodes. The thing is, the strategy for player two cannot be something like play C here and play D here. This cannot be a strategy in this game. Why not? That's very, very important distinction. Well, because remember, according to this game tree, player two is completely blindfolded. He cannot see the first player's action. So therefore, he cannot condition his strategy or action uh, on the first player's choice. So knowing the decision nodes basically means conditioning your actions or strategies upon your opponent's action. So however, this info set means you don't know where exactly you are. So you can't say, I'm gonna choose C here and I'm gonna choose D here. Well, I'm sorry, but you will never be informed about where exactly you are. So all I'm going to tell you is that it's your turn to choose. So therefore, you can't say I'm going to choose C here, D here, or vice versa. So you have to say I'm going to choose C or I'm going to choose D. So therefore, when we uh, define strategy, strategy 
is a complete contingency plan. Uh, it, it basically tells us what action players will take at every single information set. And for one info set, there should be just one action, not two different or three different actions. All right, that means there are two strategies for player one and it's C and D. Okay, so very well. These are the strategy spaces of player one. How can I map this to what we call normal forms? I'm gonna describe exactly the same game in a different way by just using strategies. We usually put uh, the role player, uh, role player as player one and the column player, column player as player two. So player two has two strategies, remember C and D. Player one has two strategies, remember A and B. So then just plug the payoffs. So when the first guy chooses A and the second guy chooses C, the payoff, well, this is the outcome and the corresponding payoff is two zero. So remember the order of those numbers matter a lot. Two always, I'm sorry, the first number corresponds to the first player, the second number corresponds to the second player, the third number corresponds to the third player, etc. Always. You can't mix them up. Well, that's going to mix up your uh, complete analysis. So be careful about it. So same here. The first number always corresponds to the first player. The second number always corresponds to the second player. Do not mix things up. Do not put player two here, player one here. So if you do that, you have to also take the mirror image of those payoffs. So don't do that. All right? Put player one always here, player two always here. What if I have three players or four or five players? Can I draw this matrix type of thing? Uh, not always, I'll talk about it later. So what if player one plays A, but player two plays D? Well, just follow the path. In this case, the outcome is gonna be three, one. What if the first guy plays B, but the second guy plays C? Well, the outcome is gonna be one, three. And then finally, B, D, the outcome is gonna be zero and two. So. Whether you're represented this way or that way, all right, uh, we're gonna say, well, both describe exactly the same game. Here, I just tell you the game tree format. Here, I'm just giving you the, uh, what we call the normal or strategic form, because the emphasis here are the strategies. All right, as, as simple as this. So let's walk, uh, work with another example. All right. Obviously, as I change the game uh, structure, uh, the, the strategy uh, space will also be different. So let's suppose, again, player one moves first. A and B are his actions. Then player, uh, well, yeah, player one moves again. And then he has actions C and D. And then player two moves. And he has... Uh, actions E and F and E and F and the payoffs 2, 2, 0, 0, 1, 1, 2, uh, 5, 5, 2. Okay, uh, so let's suppose this is the game. All right, so let's start with the strategy set or strategy space of the first player. Question. How many information sets does player one have? Well, this is the decision note or info set for player one. This is another info set, decision note, singleton decision note, a singleton information set, I'm sorry, for player one. And there's no other decision note for player one. So the player one has two decision node or info set. And each decision note, he has two actions. In one, he has A versus B. In the other, he has C versus D. So therefore, there are how many combinations? Two to the power to four combinations. All right. So his strategies are A, C, A, uh, D. I know they don't make sense. I'll, I'll come to that. B, C, B, D, okay? 
Some of you may ask uh, or you know, um, say, well, AC, AD are like pointless because they all means player one is playing A and the game is over. So why don't I just put you know, A, B, C, B, D? I can do that. I mean, there's no harm with this. But let's stick with one formal description of strategy. Strategy is a function which maps every information set to an action available at that uh, info set, all right? So therefore, what I need to do, okay? Remember, I have two info sets, info set one, info set two. In info set one, I'm gonna take action A. In info set two, I'm gonna take action C. But you're gonna say, hey, if info set one is, I'm sorry, if A is chosen, info set two will never be reached. Why do I worry about what action I'm gonna take? Remember the description of the strategy. Once again, at every decision note, the strategy or at every information set the player has, the strategy should specify an action. All right, stick to this definition. Trust me, life is gonna be easier later when we talk about complicated games. Okay, so once again, info set one, info set two, info set one. In so this is always the order. The first action tells me what he's gonna do in his first info set, and the second action tells me what he's gonna do in the second info set, and so on. So for that reason, there are two to the power two, four strategies for player one. What about player two? Player two's life is much simpler because he has just one info set, and in this info set, there are two available actions, E and F. So therefore, she has only two strategies, E and F. That's it. Very good. How can I now transfer, well, transform this game into a strategic form game? Well, what is the idea? Well, the idea is put the strategies of the first and the second player on a box, on a table, and then put the payoffs. That's it. Because I have four strategies for player one, there should be four rows. Remember, player one was the row player. So I have row one, row two, row three, and four. And so they are AC, AD, BC, and BD, as simple as this. Well, what about the second player, the column player? He has two strategies, so there should be two columns. So therefore, the strategic form of this game has to be four by two game. Uh, and these strategies are E and F. Now the rest is just filling these boxes. So if it is a C strategy, A and, and C here, but you know what, who cares about C? Because once A is played, you know, outcome is 2-2, regardless of whether the second guy plays E or F, because those part of the game will never be reached. So I can immediately put two and two whenever I see A uh, coming from the first player, all right? What about the uh, B, C? All right, so B and C, and then the second guy plays E, so it's zero, zero. Uh, but if he plays F, it's gonna be one, one. All right, uh, if it is B, D, however, uh, if the second guy plays E, it's gonna be two, five, and it's, uh, it's otherwise, it's gonna be five, two. So that's it. So this is the game tree format. This is the strategic format or form of this game. All right, very good. Let's see if we have time for one more example. Yes, we do. Very well. Um, I'm gonna talk about the same example, but this time I'm gonna break this, okay? So there's no info set. Player two has two decision notes. And I'm gonna leave those E and Fs uh, as it is. Because remember in my previous videos, I said whenever decision nodes are separate, meaning they're not in the same info set, we change the letters so that it would be easier to write down the strategies. But I'm gonna do the contrary to that. It's like, let's leave them as it is and see what type of complications we may have. All right, so this is now the game. It's a completely different strategic environment. Why is that? Uh, I mean, you will probably not notice this at this point because we did not start solving these games or analyzing these games, but the information structure is different, right? Here, the second guy will observe the first guy and then make a move. 
So that will probably change his optimal strategy. Anyway, or optimal choice. Uh, not strategy, but the choice. The strategies are fixed. Strategies are fixed by the structure of the game. A choice of the strategy depends on uh, you know, whether you want to choose it or not. All right? Okay, so in this world, um, again, how many strategies player one has? We didn't really change anything for player one. He still has two info sets. So therefore he has still those four strategies. So it's gonna be a four uh, rows. What about the second player? Second player has now two info sets. Info set one, info set two for player two. All right, and in each info set, uh, I'm sorry, decision note, he has two actions. Very good. So therefore, again, similar to the player one, there must be two to the power of two, which is four strategies for the second player. And they are E, 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 F, F, E, and F, F. All right. So what does this repetition means? All right. So this repetition means is that the second player is going to play E here and E here. All right. So he plays E regardless. Here, EF means he's going to play E here, but F here. And here, FE means he's going to play F here and E here. And here, FF means he's going to play F regardless. So this is why we want to give different names to different actions when these decision nodes are not in the same info. Because here, sometimes, I mean, not maybe in this game, but it might be complicated. It's like, I mean, this E refers to where exactly, or this E refers to where, this F refers to where, right? I mean, that, that, that's a problem. So um, be careful about this. Uh, uh, all right, so I'm gonna leave it this way. So that means we have four by four game, not four by two game. So I have uh, not EF, oops, uh, I'll just add, you know, two more columns. And so here the strategies are EE, obviously those numbers may change, EF, uh, FE, and then FF, okay. Um, so remember, uh, the first corresponds to the uh, upper uh, uh, decision note. The second corresponds to the lower decision note. Don't forget that, because if you forget that, you're going to screw up with the numbers. All right? Uh, so you either be consistently transfer those numbers, or you just give different names. Instead of EF, say KM. And so here, don't say EE, -E, it's EK, EM. Uh, F, e, F, e, uh, K, F, M, all right? Maybe it's easier. So I'm gonna leave it th this way any anyhow. So here, whenever I have A from the first player, right? The game is over. So whenever I see A, it's two, two everywhere. So regardless of what the other guys do. Very good. So what about B, C? So I have B here, C here. All right, very good. So B, C, so I don't really care about the second part of the second player strategy. So it's gonna be E. So E, E or E, F will always gonna give me zero, zero, all right? So uh, where am I? Oh, so I'm sorry, I am B, B, C. So E, E is gonna give me zero. E, F is gonna give me um, still zero. You see the difference? Why is that, remember? I care about the first numbers whenever it is BC because first numbers, I'm sorry, first action. Here, this, this action will not be realized. So I don't care what, how he plays in the second uh, part. So therefore, whenever he has E, it's going to be zero, zero. Very good. So whenever I have BC and this time F, E or F, F. So once again, I don't care about those second components. As long as he plays F, he's gonna get one. So this is one, 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 one. So if he's BD playing BD, well, this time the first components are irrelevant. So I'm gonna look at the E's. So if the second component is E, it's gonna be two, five. So this is two, five, and this is also two, five. And whenever his, the second component is F, it has to be five, two. This is five, two, this is five, two. All right, um, so that's it. So two lessons that we should learn from this. One, uh, as I said, or as I try to underline it again and again, is like having different names in two different decision nodes is 
you know, away a lot of simplifications. Uh, that's one, uh, point one. Second, changing this information structure will also change the structure of the game in the normal form representation or strategic form representation. All right? Is it going to change the outcome? Maybe, yes or no, but we're not there. I mean, we, we, we did not start analyzing the games, but it's going to change the strategic form, normal form representation as well. So let me stop here with this example. And the next episode, I'm going to talk about the interpretation of normal form games and the relationship between uh, uh, game tree and normal form representation. All right, so it's coming up.